What's up, everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today, doing the mid-year top tens, the 2022 mid-year top tens, and this is going to be on the 168-pound super middleweight division. Now, again, this is not my official top tens. I wait till the end of the year to do official top tens. So it's just where I see everybody now, halfway through the year. We see what the guys in the top ten did, even the guys that dropped out, and we see what they potentially could be doing or what they are doing in the second half of the year just a, a pretty pretty much an update so let's start with the guy that dropped out only one guy dropped out and that is former world title challenger gabriel rosado he previously was number six now rosado had made an impression on me in the 168 pound division um when he knocked out bektamir uh, melikuziev uh prior to that he almost beat Daniel Jacobs. He lost a close, controversial split decision to Jacobs. So I thought, you know, hey, even though he went down to 160 and fought Jaime Manguia back in November and got beat uh, by a convincing unanimous decision, that guy, you know, Manguia was 10 years his junior, and I felt like Rosado was going to be a serious threat, uh, still like a serious contender at 168. It was, you know, more natural for him at this age. And then he went in against Shane Mosley Jr. and lost. And I'm sorry, Shane Mosley is not a top 10 guy, not even close. And I felt like that loss absolutely should have taken um, him out of the top 10, and I have. So we'll see how Rosado bounces back. I know he's like 35, 36, so he's getting up there, but we'll see what he does. Number 10 now is undefeated contender Larone Richards. He wasn't ranked before. He hasn't fought yet this year. Um, I, I, I had a tough time doing a number 10 fighter here just because the, 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 this division is not very deep in terms of guys that have established themselves. And Richards last year defeated Carlos uh, Con Congoro, which was a nice win for him. And now we just got to wait and see kind of what Richards is going to do next. You know, he, he, he may or may not hold down this spot. We'll see. We'll see what he does. Um, haven't heard anything. He's a WBC and IBS number 10 contender. So he's trying to move up the rankings. But again, we got to see what he's going to do. Number nine is contender Kyron Davis. Davis uh, previously was number nine. He's not ranked in any division right now at 168. Um, he's a PBC guy. You know, he's lost. He lost to David Benavidez last year. Hasn't returned since then. Um, but, you know, he showed a lot of heart in that fight. And prior to that, he fought Darrell to a draw. In, in February so I still think that warrants Davis a top 10 spot for now so we'll see what he does with it we'll see if he can come back if he fights anybody um, you know legit at 168 like a rematch with with Darrell or Caleb Plant if they don't fight each other but we just have to wait and see what happens number eight is the undefeated WBA regular champion David Morrell he moves up two spots from number 10 Morrell um, returned to action in June and took on Kelvin Hernandez um, and dominated him with a with a fourth round TKO victory. It could have been Kelvin uh, Henderson. I might might have gotten the last name wrong. He dominated him by a fourth round TKO victory. And now next we don't know for sure, but Morrell has been talking a lot of shit about David Benavidez and calling him out. He says he's ready for Benavidez plant or Durrell in his next fight. And what makes this appealing, I've been calling for this, a fight with Benavidez now that Benavidez is the interim champion. Basically, a regular belt for the WBA is pretty much an interim belt now um, as they're trying to get rid of it. The winner of the two Davids, Benavidez and Morrell, the winner of that fight would pretty much be once Canelo moves up in weight, vacates those belts, whatever, once that happens and those belts go vacant, they, the, the winner of that fight gets upgraded with two belts. They become a unified champion just like that because they're the regular champ and the interim champ of two of the four governing bodies. So that's a big fight. I think it's going to happen for Morrell. I don't think he can beat Benavidez, but he is good. He's young. He's undefeated. Going to be very interesting. And I really think that's the fight we're going to see in the second half of the year is Benavidez and Morrell um, in a big uh, time showdown right there. So we'll see. Number seven is former two-time champion Anthony Durrell. Durrell stays number seven. 
He's currently the WBC and WBO's number four contender. His next fight is not for sure. He hasn't fought yet this year, but there's a lot of talk that Darrell is gonna get, uh, Darrell and Caleb Plant are in talks for a showdown in the second half of the year. Very interesting battle right here. Um, personally, I think Caleb Plant beats Darrell, but Darrell is not a guy that goes easily, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, uh, if Darrell fought somebody else but, you know, we just got to wait and see what happens. Darrell's the kind of guy that only likes to fight once a year. So we're going to see what he decides to do and go from there. But I'm, I'm interested in seeing what happens here for uh, for Anthony Darrell. I'd, I really would like to see him fight Caleb Plant. I think that's a very good battle to basically, in my opinion, the winner probably is top three or four in the division. So very interesting. Number six, dropping two spots from number four is the former two-division world champion, Billy Joe Saunders. Uh, Billy Joe still hasn't fought since he got knocked out against Canelo last year. Um, the talk is that he's still contemplating retirement. He still uh, is not sure if he's gonna be returning or not. Um, he's been linked to a couple different fights, but it, it seems like those have not been real. Um, I don't know if Billy Joe wants to come back. If he does, he needs to come back for the end of the year. Um, and everything. He's a WBC's number nine contender. That's his highest ranking. Um, not sure where he really could go. I know there was talks about a potential rematch with John Ryder, somebody he, he defeated back in the day. And uh, Ryder's uh, coming off that nice win over Daniel Jacobs. So just got to wait and see. But I hope Billy Joe does come back for the end of the year because he is talented and he is entertaining. Number uh, Still number five is the former IBF champion, Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant hasn't yet fought this year. He's a WBC's number two contender. Um, there have been a lot of talk uh, that he, uh, there has been a lot of talk that he could be potentially fighting Anthony Durrell, the fellow former champion, in their next fight in the second half of the year. So if that happens, I think Caleb Plant, Caleb Plant wins that fight and he throws himself right back in the serious mix coming off the loss to Canelo last year for the undisputed title. So we're going to see what goes down. Um, if the the battle of the Davids doesn't happen between Benavidez and Morrell, um, I wouldn't be surprised if Plant fought either one of those guys either. But I, I really would like to see him and Darrell just to kind of shake off that rush, shake off the loss, and see what goes down. Because then I think we're going to get a strong gauge of really where Caleb Plant is as a fighter especially going forward and coming off of his first uh, defeat. Number four, dropping one spot for number three is former two division, or actually former two-time middleweight champion of the world, uh, Daniel Jacobs. Daniel Jacobs in February returned after a near, you know, get, getting uh, after about a 15 month layoff um, and a poor performance in, against Gabriel Rosado in he was boxing well in the first half of the fight against John Ryder, and then Ryder took over in the second half of the fight, and um, Jacobs just seemed to get complacent. He ended up losing a 12-round split decision, and now we really don't know how Jacobs moves forward. If he returns and fights somebody legit, or if he just stays busy, it's going to be interesting to see what Jacobs does in the second half of the year, but he needs to try to come back at some point if he wants to make a serious run at 168 again, so we'll see. Number three is John Ryder, the former world title challenger. He moves up five spots for number eight with that win over Danny Jacobs. That was a big win. He's the WBA's number two contender right now. And, you know, he's been linked to some uh, some fights already uh, with uh, Billy Joe Saunders and different things like that. We don't know how concrete those are, but now that we know which direction Canelo's going in because Ryder was said to be a potential opponent for a third fight for Canelo in December. Um, we kind of are seeing that Canelo, the way Canelo is talking right now is that he's likely gonna, um, he's likely gonna fight. Well, he is fighting Triple G, we know that. But when he's, but after the Triple G fight, he's likely gonna take time off um, till the following spring and fight Demetri Bivol. Now, does he defend his title again in December just to get another another payday and another uh, opponent on his resume to build towards that rematch with Bivol. I don't know. I think his focus is Triple G and then getting revenge on Demetri Bivol at 175. So we'll see what happens. I think it's on the, 
Right now, I think it's on the back burner, a possibility with Ryder, but Ryder doesn't want to blow it. He definitely wants to keep, uh, see the interest in Canelo possibly fighting in December and taking him on. But we'll see what goes down. Number two is the undefeated WBC interim champion, former two-time WBC champion, David Benavidez. He remains number two. He took on David Lemieux for the vacant uh, WBC interim title in May and dominated David Lemieux um, in only three rounds as he captured the interim belt with that win. And now he's in line to fight for the title, but Canelo's making an undisputed title defense against Triple G Gennady Golovkin next. Um, so Benavidez wanted Caleb Plant, not likely going to happen. But David Morrell, the WBA regular champion, is sitting there calling him out, saying that he's going to make Benavidez his bitch. I really think we're going to see the battle of the undefeated Davids in the second half of the year. And it's an exciting battle. Again, with Benavidez being interim champion for the WBC and Morrell being the WBA regular champion, which is essentially the same thing for the WBA, what that's going to that's gonna set up the winner of the, of the Davids as being a, a unified champion once Canelo moves up or once those belts go vacant. And that's a big, big deal right there. So we're going to see, see what goes down, but big time fight on the horizon. If they fight, I think Benavidez is going to beat Morrell, but I do, I do think it's a good matchup. Can't wait to, can't wait to po potentially see it. And I just really can't wait to see Benavidez back in the ring. And I hope it's against a legit top 10 contender, but we'll see. And still number one is the undisputed super middleweight champion of the world, Canelo Alvarez. He entered the year number one and he moved up to light heavyweight, held onto his belts at 168 as he attempted to win a belt at 175 again against the undefeated Dimitri Bival. And he got outboxed, he got outworked and surprised and pretty much got shut down, lost a clean, unanimous decision. Um, and you know, now though, because he signed the, t the guaranteed two fight deal, he's moving back down to 168 and in September, he will defend all four of his titles, his undisputed championship against Triple G Gennady Golovkin, the current unified middleweight champion. This is a third fight between the two. The first fight ended in a controversial draw. The second fight ended in a, ended in a controversial split decision victory for Canelo. Now they're gonna settle their business on September 17th on the zone pay-per-view. So really looking forward to that. I think Canelo is going to beat and potentially stop Canelo, uh, Triple G. And then after that, I don't know if he fights again in December, but again, I believe his focus, as far as I'm reading it, is on a rematch with Demetri Bival at 175. So we'll see what goes down, but that's what I got. That's my 2022 uh, mid-year top tens. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment. I appreciate any and all support. And this is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.